Okay, so good evening everyone. So this is another lesson to our subject assessment in Ring 2. So now we will talk about the outcome-based education or the OPE and assessment. So we all know that your assessment in Learning 1 talks about more on the concepts of the outcome-based education. And I know for sure that you are familiar already with the outcome-based education. So what is the difference between the um, OBE to assessment in learning 2 and OBE in assessment in learning 1? So in learning 2, we will talk about the connection of the OBE and the assessment. And we all know that the OBE has become the talk among those involved in teaching. So for quality assurance, so the Commission on Higher Education or CHED um, issued Memorandum Order 46 years of 2012, the policy standard to enhance quality assurance through outcomes-based and type typology-based quality assurance. So uh, we will talk about here what is outcome-based education, what is outcome-based teaching learning, and what is constructive alignment. So um, OBE is not new to us, so it is importantly new. So the instructional cycle of the master learning, which has been applied in the classroom since the 60s, is in essence the same OBE and the OBTL principle. So to start our lesson this evening, let us um, define the meaning of OBE. So the OBE means outcome-based education. So simply put, it is education based on outcome. So this outcome may refer to immediate outcome or deferred outcome. So when we say immediate outcome, uh, these are the competencies skills upon completion of a lesson, a subject, a grade year, a course, or a program itself. So I repeat, um, the outcome in the OBE may refer to immediate outcome or deferred outcome. So uh, when we say it is immediate outcome, these are the competencies, skills, upon completion of a lesson, a subject, a grade year, a course, or a program itself. So, for example, um, the ability to communicate in writing is an example of an immediate outcome. Reading, speaking, and solve mathematical problems. How about deferred outcome? So, deferred outcome refers to the ability to apply cognitive, psychomotor, and affective skills or competencies in the various aspects of the professional and workplace practice. So, for example, um, is the success in professional practice or occupation as evidence of a skill in career planning, health, wellness, and continuing education. So let us now proceed to the definition of OBE according to Spadi's version. So in Spadi's version of OBE, he defined OBE as transformational OBE. So this is concerned with the long-term cross-curricular outcomes that are related directly to students' future life roles, such as being productive worker and etc. So, in transformational OBE, learning is not significant unless the outcomes reflect the complexities of real life and give prominence to the life roles that the learners will face after formal education. So in transformational OBE, learning outcomes compromise or comprise the knowledge, understanding, skills, and attitudes that learners should acquire to enable them to reach their full potential and lead successful and fulfilling lives as individuals, as a member of community, and a at work. So, Spadis describes outcome as a clear learning results that we want students to demonstrate at the end of the learning experiences. So, what learners can actually do with what they know and have learned and tangible application of what have been learned. So, I want you to remember this, that for Spadis version, the outcome he refers to are the deferred Outcome. So again, I will repeat for Spadi's version of OBE, the outcome he refers to are the deferred outcomes. 
So, let us now proceed to the OBTL that stands for Outcome-Based Teaching Learning by Bakes Version. So, again, OBTL stands for Outcome-Based Teaching Lear and teaching and learning by Biggs version. So, according to Biggs and Tang, make use of the term outcome-based teaching learning or OBTL, which in essence is OBE applied in the teaching learning process. So, they define outcomes as a learning outcomes which are more specific than institutional outcomes, program outcomes, and course outcomes. So, these three outcomes mentioned here, um, we will discuss this further in our next uh, presentation. So, they define um, outcome as learning which are more specific than institutional outcomes program outcomes, and course outcomes. So, in big and tongues, outcomes are statement of what we expect students to demonstrate after they have been taught. This is also referred as the learning outcomes. So, next is, according to Biggs, uh, there are different levels of outcomes. So, these are the institutional outcomes or the graduate attributes, the program outcomes, the course outcomes, and the learning outcomes. So the most broad are the institutional outcomes and the most specific are the learning outcomes. So these are arranged for most broad outcomes followed by the program outcomes, the course outcomes, and learning outcomes. So from the institutional outcomes, are drawn from the graduate attributes that the graduates of the institution are expected to demonstrate after um, graduation. So other claims that the graduate attributes are likewise drawn from the program outcomes. So the program outcomes are outcomes that graduate of the program are expected to demonstrate at the end of the program. While the course outcomes or the particular subject outcomes while learning outcomes are the most specific outcomes that the teacher is concerned with in his or her specific lessons. So as you can see here, um, the levels of the outcomes came from the broad, from the institutional outcomes down to the uh, specific outcomes, which is the learning outcomes. So, after the levels of different levels of the outcomes, we have also here the principles of OBE, the four principles of OBE. So, we have here the clarity of focus, designing down high expectations, and expanded opportunities. So, when we see clarity of focus, it simply means that the outcomes which students are expected to demonstrate at the end of the program are clear. While on designing down, this means basing the details of your instructional design on the outcomes, the focus of the um, instruction. While on the high expectations, this believes that all learners can learn and succeed, but not all in the same time or in the same way. So not all the learners can learn the same thing in the same way and in the same amount of time. but all are capable of mastery and meaningful learning. So some learners may need more time than the others. So teacher, therefore, must provide the expanded opportunities for all learners. So most learners can achieve high standards if they are given appropriate opportunities. So OBE is anchored on the premise that all learners are teachable. So the parable of the talents is a frequent reminder that not all learners receive five talents. So others receive three and still others one. So take note, however, that everyone received a talent or more other than more time and more opportunity for learners with just one or three talents, more scaffolding from teacher is necessary. So let's now proceed to the constructive alignment so in big term uh, the constructive alignment of designing down as given by spady 
So, the constructive alignment is a process of creating a learning environment, learning environment that supports the learning activities that leads to the achievement if the desired learning outcomes. So, the supportive learning environment is a learning environment where the intended learning outcomes, the teaching learning activities, and the assessment tasks are aligned. So, it is a learning environment that is highly focused on the attainment of the learning outcomes. So, in the context of assessment, constructive alignment also means that the assessment tasks and the specific criteria as basis of judgment of students' performance are aligned to the intended learning outcome. So, this is the concern of this course on the assessment so that the assessment tasks are aligned to the learning outcomes. So, we have here a figure that shows the alignment of the curriculum model. So, in our first box, we have here the intended learning outcomes of the curriculum. So, the outcomes are formulated first. So, from this, the assessment criteria are developed. So, the once an appropriate um, assessment regime has been designed, um, activities are organized that will teach the students how to meet the assessment criteria and the outcomes. So, after the assessment regime, we have the teaching and learning activities. So, what the teacher does and what the students do are aimed at the achieving the outcomes by meeting the assessment criteria. So, this takes advantage of the known tendency of students to learn what they think will be assessed and is called backwash. So, after the alignment of curriculum model, we have the UBD or the understanding by design by Wiggins and Maktai. So, Wiggins and Maktai, uh, they are advocates of the UBD that give these three stages. So, I have here figure of three stages that starts from identify result, determine acceptable evidence, and plan learning and experiences and instruction. So this UBD is OBE and OBTL in principle and in practice. So I want you to remember this, that UBD is OBE and OBTL in principle and in practice. So in here, by identifying the desired results or the outcomes and evidence of the um, realization of the proof of the attainment of that outcome that the teacher stands to uh, make a plan for instruction. So this is to ensure that the alignment of assessment tasks and criteria and instructional plan with learning outcome, the desired result. So UBD operates on the same principles that OBE and OBTL operate on. So the assessment process may not take place yet after you have identified the desired results. So for um understandable that you have not yet thought but the evidence of the learning through an assessment task is already identified at this stage. So, in identifying the evidence of learning right after identifying the intended learning outcome has an instructional advantage. So, making clear how the intended learning outcome will be assessed invariably sharpens and focuses instruction. So, in fact, if teacher is not able to determine how he or she is going to assess the achievement of the intended outcome, it means that the intended outcome is not specific and clear enough that the teacher does not even have a clear idea on how he or she is going to assess it. So, um, in basic education, in basic education, the teacher's lesson plan actually begins with a lesson objective. So, however, the evaluation portion is planned and is re written last. And so, very often, the evaluation that the teacher writes is far-fetched from his or her lesson objective. Your evaluation is not congruent with your objective. Is a common remark of a school head's who check lesson plans and do classroom observation. So this implies the need for teachers to work on an assessment task that is aligned to the lesson objective. So after the three stages of the UBD, we have here 
Ah, I want you to remember also that UBD is OBE and OBTL in principle and in practice. So after the UBD, we have here a figure again that explains the instructional cycle. So, this shows that the cycle of instruction begins with setting clear learning outcomes. So, in here, clear learning outcomes. So, this should be made very clear and explicit to the learners who should make the learning outcomes also their very own. So, based on the learning outcomes and applying all principles of teaching and educational technology, the teacher has learned, the teacher first finds out how well the learners have attained prerequisite knowledge and skills, remedies the situation. If necessary, then proceed to teach for the attainment of the intended learning outcome. So the teacher employs appropriate teaching learning activities and ex instructional materials. So this is now. So after you set a clear learning outcomes, you proceed to the teaching learning. So, the teacher employs appropriate teaching learning activities and instructional materials while the teaching learning process is in progress. So, the teacher checks learners' progress in relation to the learning outcomes by himself or himself in formative assessment. So, if the learners have not attained the learning outcomes, teacher will reteach using other teaching learning activities when every effort has been exerted to help the learners attain the le intended learning outcome. So, assessment for scoring and grading such as the summative assessment takes place. So, it is clear that which determines the content, the teaching learning activities, the instructional materials in the instructional process and assessment is or the intended learning outcomes. Then and only then can we call it outcome-based teaching and learning? So that's all for to today's lesson. So I hope you learned something. So if you have questions or if you have any um, questions, you can leave it in our official group chat. So again, this is a reminder. After 30 minutes of our scheduled time, which is 7.31, I will send the link of your quiz and until 8 o'clock only, the link will be closed. So, thank you very much and see you again to our next discussion. God bless!